Okay, I have a song for Jennifer based on Twitter. It goes like this. You gotta know when to hold them. Jen, everybody was tweeting me saying, does Jennifer Valentine have a card problem? You were tweeting about your poker tournament this weekend. Yeah, you know what? I'm hooked now. First time I ever played. I came in about ninth. There were a hundred people. Yeah. I I know when to hold them, and so, I know when to fold them. Ninth out of a hundred. So that like, so what was it? Was there a prize? I don't get how it works. Prizes for the top five, three. Prizes or? for the top three. So I have to tell you, when I when I was out, I had a pair, and I I don't know. I thought I was going to win that hand. I put it all in. I actually went into the washroom, and yeah. I I had myself just a little bit of a breakdown, and then I was okay. <gasps> So give okay. us your best poker face, Jen. Did you? Oh, yeah. No, I my best po poker face was. Hmm. I don't know if these cards are any good. <laughs> this is my first time. Poker. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for you. You got in the top 10 percentile. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we're announcing the host of Canada's Got Talent today on the show. And the two other judges. Finally. Uh, you know what? I can't wait. I'm going to announce the, the host right now. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Gilbert, oh. the host of Canada's Got Talent. <laughs> How do you feel, Bob? Honored to be here. Um, I don't know why they picked me, but I'm here and they're looking for new talent. Yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, so we're kidding. Bob is from the States, but he is here for the, the Canadian Manufacturing and Technology Show. Have you been here before in Tor to Toronto? Yes. Yeah, so it must have been a shock when I said you're the next host of Canada's Got Talent. Very much. Yeah. Do you watch America's Got Talent? Uh, once in a while. Once in a while, yeah, because you, yeah. you have it in the States. Well, now we have it here in Canada. We have Canada's Got Talent, so we're excited. We're announcing the host and two more judges later on today. So it's nice to meet you, uh, Bob. Bob Jalbert is actually with Flow Water Jet, and we're going to take a look at it because we are looking at the latest and greatest in technology. And, Joe, we have been cutting... Okay, we're having some live eye difficulties there. Uh, we'll get back to Jennifer in just a few minutes. Thanks, Kev. Back at the Canadian Manufacturing and Technology Show. Here we go. It's as easy as this. Click to cut a pumpkin. This machine, it is the Flow Water Jet. It cuts any surface, not just a pumpkin, but anything. Joe is here. Joe, what do we have on the table here? Well, basically, the Water Jet technology itself plays an important part in the manufacturing industry because of its diversity. You can virtually cut any kind of material with a water jet system with little to no setup as you go from one material to the next. Including diapers. In fact, that's diapers. how it started. That's one of the first commercial applications for this technology. So uh, because the diapers, because the, when, when they cut the diapers, there were pieces of metal in the diaper and they didn't want that. that so they had to come correct. up with a new system. That's correct. The, the, the metal shards from the blades that originally cut the diapers could get uh, become into the diaper itself and that could cause problems for infection on a baby if, they're, if it's going to cut them. The water jet itself removes any of that issue. And, and cut any kind of surface, including this. Look at that, Jennifer. Thank you so much. And now the pumpkin has been cut. Our breakfast television pumpkin. So cool. It is the Flow Water Jet Cuts with Water, Kev. Thank you. Good use for the machine. We'll be back on breakfast television. I know we said we were going to be doing some welding for this segment, but do you dance? I dance a little, yeah. Can, can I see how you dance? He knows how to bust a move. <laughs> okay, come on over here. Poor Jay, he had no idea that was going to happen. Jay you Smith, he's from right? Netterman. Mm -hmm. I want to be on this side. Is that okay? That's right. perfect. This is my good side. Uh, what are we doing here? What is this? We are demonstrating uh, on tool extraction for a welding gun. What this will do is protect the welder from the welding fumes that you see coming from a weld. So this is a mock demonstration of welding with a, a, a proper welding gun. So you would turn on, turn on the, the uh, vacuum. 
and it will draw the welding fumes. So while you're welding, while you're it's welding. also sucking up all the fumes, so you're not sucking it in yourself. Exactly. You're creating harmful fumes that normally go right into the welder's face. So at Netterman, we try to extract before it gets to the welder. We're at the Canadian Manufacturing and Technology Show, and this is what it's all about. What do we have right down here? We are showing down here that when you're welding in, in your welding booth, you also have dust and other particulates that are created in the welding process. So this machine, the P300, can can extract fumes with a welding gun and then you could disconnect it from there and use your, your cleaning station to clean your station. So right over here we've got, what do we have on the ground there? That's a metal flux from say a stick electrode. So you get, you're gonna chip, they chip that away from the weld. It's a protective flux that goes on the weld when you're adhering two pieces of metal together. But is that a demonstration? You're gonna yes. clean that up? You amp, take off the gun, okay, put so it on the machine, line. Yeah. Turn it on and off we go. So the difference between this particular unit and just a vacuum. It's just and, and just a vacuum is from here to here is all filter. So you're filtering, it's a very, very large filter. Thank you so much, Jay. Good dancing. Oh. Thanks for being a good sport. Uh -huh. That's on film? <laughs> that was live for everyone to see forever Thanks, and ever. We're just going to keep playing it over and over again. Back to the station. Thanks. That was it? That was it. Thank you so much for being hey, here. You. Over to Jen at Live. Hi, Jen. Hey, D. Good morning, everyone. Mitatoyo. That's the name of the company here. We are at the Canadian Manufacturing uh, uh, Technology Show, and this is a show for people in the trade. People may come to this show to get this machine for their company. So let's find out what this this machine is all about. Ravi Prasad is here with me. What is this machine? What is this machine called? Um, the, the structure itself is called the coordinate measuring machine and the product we're showcasing here today is the uh, Mitotoyo surface measure which is a uh, laser scanner um, mm -hmm. that fits onto the coordinate measuring machine. Essentially it works with a laser system and a camera. The uh, laser is emitted onto the part and the camera picks up that image. Um, why you might want to use something like this is to um, inspect your parts. Uh, here we're um, inspecting a Wii controller. Mm -hmm. um, so as you can see, it's basically two components. So, which may be uh, manufactured in two different um, factories. So obviously you wanna make sure that two parts fit together. So you scan the first part and you get the size dimensions, scan the second part, get those dimensions and ensure that the two will fit together. Now this just saves time because you could have a person doing this and making sure that the pieces fit together, but that's gonna take a lot of time. Right. This saves time, it makes it quick, it makes it easy. You don't want somebody buying this piece of equipment and finding out when they get it home that these two pieces don't fall apart. So somebody or something has to do the inspecting and this just saves time. So how long would this take to inspect with this machine? Um, well, the, the routine we have running here runs for about a minute. Um, essentially, it's a fully automated system, so you program it, um, it's hands off, you put the part on the table, you hit go, and it would inspect your part for you. So exactly, it, it takes the, uh, the operator right out of it. Looking at the computer, it looks like this part fits and it's in good working order. Thank you so Thank much. You. We'll see you when we come back. We're heading back to the station. <laughs> I can't wait. Love it. Okay, well, this morning we are here at the Canadian Ma Manufacturing and Technology Show. We've stopped by this booth. Ellison Technologies, Robert Dunbar is here. Uh, and you have different machines that work with different companies. Correct. Uh, Ellison Technologies is the uh, largest machine tool distributor in North America. We have 21 offices in Canada and the U.S., and we're dedicated to the uh, survival and growth of the manufacturing industry here tell, in North America. Tell me about uh, this piece of equipment right here, this machine. This is a Morisiki, uh, made in Japan, Morisiki NLX lathe. So it's a turning center that manufactures parts for automotive parts or aircraft parts. Uh, and we're doing some demonstrations here to show, um, you know, all the attributes of the machine. Right Can now. we go to so, the next machine? Because sure. we've got three machines sure. here that we are looking at. This is uh, this is a robot, a caged-in robot. Right. We don't want to let it out of the <laughs> yeah. cage. No, no, I'm afraid. Like bite us or something like that. But this is a robot that would be used for, and we're going to actually get you to drive this in a minute here. Well, to, so, to drive it, I know that all I have to do is press this green button, and there you go. So what kind of parts would this uh, robot work with? Um, the same type of parts as we were talking about before. It can be used for any kind of uh, part when you want to manufacture a whole lot of parts or you have 
you know, uh, multiple part runs, you would like automotive parts. It could be automotive parts, aircraft parts, uh, energy parts, nuclear parts, uh, any kind of parts like that. But what this is doing is simulating that it would you'd load the drawers with with uh, the blank parts, and then the machine automatically opens the robot automatically opens the drawers. Wow! And 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 loads the parts into the machine, and then takes the finished parts out. But does it do dishes? That's what I want to know. Okay, the very last machine here, very quickly, uh, Robert. Right. This is a a vertical five axis turning center. It's used specifically uh, for very complex parts. And what you see in there right now is it's manufacturing a gear. And that would be a typical gear for perhaps an aircraft engine, uh, like a jet engine part, or it could be differential gears for an automotive part, things Thank like that. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, the Canadian Manufacturing and Technology Show. For more information, go to breakfasttelevision.ca. And here's a man, he de definitely does dishes. Does Kevin Frank, yes, does dishes. Windows, dishes, everything.